this hour on BTV News. Prime Minister orders acceleration of transport projects in the Mekong Delta. And Vietnam's growth drivers traveling in the right direction. In our world news, North Korea says 1.4 million apply to join army amid tensions with the South. Broadcasting from Hanoi, the capital of Vietnam, VTV News starts right now. Good morning, it is 8 a.m. local time in Hanoi and you're watching at VTV News. I'm Huyen Chen with the top stories. In a working session with the Guangxi Provincial Party Standing Committee on Wednesday, Party General Secretary and State President Tô Lâm reviewed the province's achievements and challenges while outlining the path ahead. A locality with a rich history of patriotism during the Revolutionary Wars, Guangxi also boasts a strategic location for transportation, clean energy and industrial development. However, he also highlighted the province's challenges in development, such as its rugged mountainous terrain, difficult and harsh weather conditions, outdated infrastructure and low provincial competitiveness index. The party general secretary and state president stressed the need to focus on the province's inherent potential to achieve breakthroughs in socio-economic development. Prime Minister Phạm Minh Chính chaired a conference in Cần Thơ City on Wednesday aimed at overcoming challenges and accelerating our transport infrastructure development in the Mekong Delta region. This marks the sixth conference on the subject, reflecting the government's focus on strategic transport infrastructure development in this region. At the conference, Prime Minister Pham Ming Ching noted that the transport infrastructure in the Mekong Delta has significantly improved over the past three years due to the determination of the government and local authorities. Currently, 120 kilometers of expressways are operational, 428 kilometers are under construction and expected to be completed next year, and 215 kilometers are being surveyed for future investment. The Prime Minister acknowledged and commended Mekong Delta localities and relevant ministries, enterprises, contractors, engineers, and workers for their significant efforts in transforming the region's transportation. He noted, however, that project implementation still encounters challenges, particularly with site clearance, the relocation of electricity network infrastructure, and securing materials for leveling and embankments. The Prime Minister urged ministries and localities to adopt the successful strategies from the 500 kV Circuit 3 transmission line project to expedite key project timelines. He also outlined three key directions for developing transportation infrastructure in the Mekong Delta. Traffic must flow smoothly. Projects should be completed on schedule or ahead of time, focusing on quality, technical standards, aesthetics, safety, hygiene, and environmental protection while preventing waste. Once decisions are made, they must be executed, delivering tangible results for the people. With substantial work ahead, localities must strive to complete 600 kilometers of highways in the Mekong Delta by 2025. The Prime Minister called on ministries, sectors, and localities to expedite mining licensing procedures and urgently relocate high-voltage power lines. Localities must complete site clearance by October and prioritize the well-being of resettled individuals while supporting contractors and workers at construction sites. He urged investors and contractors to bolster their human resources, machinery, and equipment and accelerate the progress of construction projects. Also on Wednesday, National Assembly Chair Chen Teng Mun met with a delegation of award winners on the 25th anniversary of the Vu Azing Scholarship Fund and the 15 years of the Vu Azing Award which is dedicated to honoring contributors to ethnic communities. The National Assembly Chair congratulated the distinguished individuals and groups, including many students, youth, and young educators who have excelled in their studies, work, and creativity, with many valuable and practical products applied in real life. National Assembly Chair Chen Tengmen emphasized the need 
to continue supporting and creating conditions for the Vu Azing Scholarship Fund to strongly spread the spirit of solidarity, contributing to building high-quality human resources for the cause of industrialization and modernization of the country. Now, during a meeting with Dr. Mustafa El Katiri, High Commissioner for Veterans and former members of the Army of Liberation of Morocco in Hanoi on October 16th, Politburo member, Secretary of the Communist Party of Vietnam's Central Committee, and Chair of its Commission for Information and Education, Nguyen Tok Nghia, emphasized that the Vietnamese people will never forget and always cherish the support that the Moroccan people provided during the past struggle for national liberation and unification, as well as in their current national construction and participation in international and regional forums. El Kateria, for his part, replied that the strong friendship between Morocco and Vietnam has stood the test for the past six decades. He expressed a desire for both countries to further enhance cooperation in the coming time, especially in educating the younger generation about Vietnam-Morocco relations. National Assembly Chair Chen Thanh Minh arrives in Laos on October 17th to attend the 45th General Assembly of the ASEAN Interparliamentary Assembly. This visit aims to strengthen cooperation between both national assemblies further and reaffirm Vietnam's National Assembly's role and responsibility in ASEAN's development. The Lao National Assembly building has hosted numerous workshops on sharing legislative experiences between the two nations. The most recent event was the scientific workshop on constitutional amendments and legislative research, which is particularly significant as Laos is currently focusing on amending its 2015 constitution. The amendments to the 2013 constitution by the Vietnamese National Assembly provide valuable insights for us in revising our constitution. The ninth session of the Lao National Assembly in 2025 expects to review the amendments to Lao's 2015 constitution. We are pleased to see that over the past decade, especially since the establishment of the first Supreme People's Assembly of Laos in 1975, the national assemblies of both countries have stood side by side, enhancing comprehensive cooperation. The achievements of Vietnam-Laos parliamentary cooperation in recent years will continue to strengthen inter-parliamentary relations and broader bilateral ties in the future. National Assembly Chair Chen Thanh Minh's participation in the 45th IPA General Assembly demonstrates Vietnam's support for Laos in its international responsibilities. It underscores the Vietnamese National Assembly's commitment to regional parliamentary mechanisms. The National Assembly Chairman's attendance at IPA 45 with a high-level delegation from Vietnam showcases the National Assembly's proactive and responsible engagement with fellow ASEAN member parliaments, reinforcing ASEAN's central role, solidarity, and unity. The delegation will also present valuable initiatives to help ASEAN governments address key regional issues. This visit also provides an opportunity to discuss measures for enhancing the effectiveness of cooperation between the two national assemblies in the coming years. Coming up next on VTV News. Vietnam's growth drivers traveling in the right direction. And Hanoi gears up for urban railway project development. Welcome back to VTV News. Now, HSBC has raised Vietnam's 2024 GDP growth forecast to 7% from 6.5%, following the country's strong third quarter performance. Calculations by HSBC's experts and the General Statistics Office show that this growth rate is entirely feasible. More on this in the following. 
HSBC's report highlights Vietnam's strong economic development in the first nine months of the year, led by the industrial manufacturing sector. The sector contributed 2.71% to the overall economic growth of 7.4%. The report also indicates that, amid the current challenges and opportunities, boosting industrial production and increasing international trade will continue to be key drivers for sustaining Vietnam's development pace. There's a lot of exports going through the ports at the moment, a lot of industrial production obviously tied to exports, and so the end of this year be largely driven by the external sector and manufacturing, but that's going to shift next year a bit more towards consumption and services. So we see a rebalancing of growth next year, a little bit away from the external sector to the domestic sector. At the Market Outlook event, which was accompanied by the publication of the report on Vietnam's economy in 2024, held on October 16th in Hanoi, experts offered recommendations to foster stronger and more sustainable growth for Vietnam's economy amidst global challenges. So it is attracting FDI in the green space into Vietnam. So that's positive. Look, I think there's a number of things that Vietnam can do to attract not just green FDI, but broader, more, more FDI in, in general. I think it's around clarity of policy. I think it is speed of administrative processes. I think there has to be some regulation around this space. It is very clear to investors how it works, how it doesn't work. HSBC's Vietnam at a Glance report for October recognized the outstanding results achieved by Vietnam's economy in the third quarter. It emphasized that Vietnam is clearly back as ASEAN's growth star. The 7% growth target is also the level the government and the entire system strive to achieve this year. The average retail electricity price has risen up by 4.8% to 2,100 Vietnam Dong per kilowatt hour. The adjustment will raise the Consumer Price Index CPI by approximately 0.04 percentage point in the fourth quarter. And this is considered to have a minimal impact on 2024's inflation target. This pig farm is fully automated, from mixing feed and feeding to bathing and cooling. The monthly electricity bill is about 2,400 US dollars and will increase by approximately 112 US dollars after the price hike. Market supply and demand significantly influence pig prices. A 5 to 7 percent increase in electricity prices has a minimal impact on selling prices. By adjusting electricity usage times, we can effectively manage electricity costs. A 10 percent increase in pork prices raises the CPI by 0.34 percentage points. In addition to efficiently managing electricity use, localities and farm owners are encouraged to restore or increase their herd sizes and enhance disease prevention to ensure supply and price stability. According to the General Statistics Office, the rise in electricity prices has minimal impact on inflation, as the CPI has been well controlled over the past nine months. We project that in this fourth quarter, even with inflation peaking at 6.4 percent, the annual inflation will reach 4.5 percent. However, this scenario is unlikely. Inflation we are seeing, um, you know, ADB's projection for 2024-2025 is remaining at 4 percent, although the last couple of months, the, the year-on-year the year on year in, inflation was higher than last year. In Nonetheless, efforts to strengthen price management will continue to prevent price increases in goods following the rise in electricity prices. The North-South High Speed Railway project is set for submission to the National Assembly this month, and this vital project will significantly boost the country's socio-economic development. If approved, Hanoi needs to finalize the investment and network connections planning. The 250-hectare Ngoc Khoi Station complex planned by Hanoi will include a high-speed railway station, the Thong Nhat Railway Station, and urban railway tracks. It aims to serve as a key hub for transferring passengers from inter-provincial and regional routes to the inner-city transport system. The land available here has sufficient capacity for urban development, constructing a railway system, and creating growth areas in the southern part of Hanoi. The Hanoi Department of Transport stated that if the high-speed railway project is approved, 
Investing in urban railways to connect with it will be essential for efficiently managing the large volume of passengers traveling to Hanoi. We will create a long-term roadmap for urban railway development and structure investments into appropriate phases to maximize efficiency for the high-speed railway and the city's other infrastructure. The Hanoi Authority for Urban Planning and Architecture announced that the capital's master plan has been submitted to the Prime Minister. Upon approval, the city will review and adjust the zoning and detailed plans for the Ngoc Hoi Station complex to meet the timeline for the high-speed railway project. October 16th marks World Food Day, and this year's theme is the right to food for a better life and a better future, leave no one behind. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, this theme is a reminder that everyone has the right to access diverse and nutritious food, which is essential for social stability. The 2024 State of Food Security and Nutrition in the World Report reveals that the daily cost of a healthy diet in Vietnam is about 4 US dollars, among the lowest in Southeast Asia. This suggests that Vietnam is successfully ensuring its citizens' right to access food. And in the 38 years since its economic reforms, Vietnam has transformed from a food importing nation to a leading global food producer and exporter, now playing a vital role in global food security. After a long period of disease outbreaks, the livestock industry has undergone significant changes. Large farms are gradually replacing the smaller ones as they have a substantial advantage over small-scale farms and household producers in, diverse, in disease prevention. And this advantage stems from technologies that facilitate effective restocking. These 40,000 pigs are raised using high-tech methods. They are kept on a biosecure layer within an automated system. This approach not only minimizes unpleasant odors, but also reduces health issues in the pigs, a major concern for many livestock farmers. In the past, we needed 70 liters of water a day for just one pig. Now, thanks to the biosecure layer, we can reduce costs and improve the quality of the meat. The biosecure layer is an effective means to protect the environment from livestock. It also protects the livestock's health. By applying technology to produce microorganisms from agricultural byproducts for odor control, this wastewater treatment system prevents unpleasant smells from pig pens from polluting the surrounding environment. These green practices are helping farms reduce production costs compared to traditional methods. The green technologies provide an opportunity for enterprises and farmers to have confidence in restocking and recovering their businesses. The adoption of green technologies is bringing significant changes to the livestock sector. In the context of fierce competition in quality and pricing, large-scale farms are leading the way in utilizing technology as a solution in livestock farming, helping to enhance the competitiveness of their products. As of October 16th, Vietnam has officially discontinued 2G-only subscription services. Telecom providers are deploying staff nationwide to assist customers in upgrading their 2G phones to 4G, with a focus on remote and rural areas. 2G subscribers who haven't yet switched to 4G will have their outgoing and incoming call services blocked. The Ministry of Information and Communication has instructed phone retailers and service providers to guide users on verifying their phone's compatibility to prevent the purchase of counterfeit devices falsely labeled as 4G but actually using a 2G technology. With a fertility rate of 1.42 children per woman of pre-productive age compared to the national average of 1.96, Ho Chi Minh City has the highest level of reluctance to have children among couples of childbearing age in the country. To encourage childbirth, the city needs to develop policies that reduce the economic burden on its citizens. This was one of the solutions proposed at a workshop, encouraging birth through practical and humane policies. A lack of pro-natalist policies or slow implementation 
has led to many develop has led many developed countries like Japan and South Korea to face a labor shortage and challenges in reversing a population aging trends. To unlock the potential of its historic sites, Duyên Quang Province has created a distinctive tourism products, offering visitors a wide range of immersive experiences rich in local identity. Visitors are drawn to the Tân Chào tourist area in Sơn Dương district, where they can return to the cradle of the revolution, hear stories of Vietnam's unforgettable revolutionary history, and appreciate the immense sacrifices made by previous generations. Nà Nua Shak, where President Ho Chi Minh lived and worked from late May 1945, Till August the 22nd, 1945, served as the headquarters of the August Revolution. Tân Chào Communal House was the site of the Tân Chào People's Congress on August the 16th and 17th, 1945, an event that laid the groundwork for the success of the August Revolution. The Tân Chào Banyan Tree marks the place where, on the afternoon of August the 16th, 1945, General Võ Nguyên Giáp signed the order for a general insurrection. These experiences will become the stories I tell my children. I will tell them what had been sacrificed in exchange for the peaceful life we have today. The combination of historical tourism and cultural experiences unique to Tuyên Quang further enriches visitors' journeys. Over two years ago, the introduction of traditional bamboo rafting and tent singing on Nà Nua Lake quickly captured the hearts of tourists. The performers are members of the tent singing and Tinh Nuit club, who deeply love the Thai ethnic culture. My experience coming here will become unforgettable memories, compelling me to return and introduce my friends and family to this place. I got to try making bamboo rice and kneading dough, to name a few. This interaction with local culture is particularly interesting to us young people. Local tourism developers are tapping into their homeland's potential by preserving historic sites, showcasing the natural landscape, and promoting cultural heritage. We will develop unique tourism products based on our ethnic and cultural legacy. Our 117 nationally ranked sites will also help us tap into our potential as a historical tourism hotspot. Tuyên Quang is actively implementing the government's master plan for developing the Tân Chào tourism industry with a vision towards 2030. This aims to transform the area into a prominent heritage tourism destination, leveraging its revolutionary historical sites as resources for tourism growth. Coming up next in our world news. North Korea says 1.4 million apply to join army amid tensions with South. And Italy imposes strict restrictions on arms supply to Israel. Now moving on to our world news, 1.4 million young North Koreans, including students and youth league officials, signed a petition to join the army, the official Korean Central News Agency KCNA reported on Wednesday. Tensions rose as North Korea accused South Korea of sending drones over its capital Pyongyang and scattering anti-North leaflets. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has outlined an immediate military action plan proposing key tasks to strengthen war deterrence and exercise the right to self-defense to safeguard national sovereignty. In response, the South Korean military announced it was closely monitoring the North's movement and stood ready to open fire. Meanwhile, the Japanese government has warned of escalating tensions on the Korean peninsula following North Korea's detonation of several symbolic transportation links with the South. Northeast Asian nations closely monitor the situation while pledging to make every effort to stabilize it. Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni said on Tuesday that the Italian government blocked all new arms deals with Israel. 
Addressing the Italian Senate, the Italian leader said that the government immediately suspended the issuance of all new licenses for the export of military materials to Israel after the start of the Israeli operation in the Gaza Strip on October 7. Accordingly, all contracts signed after October 7 were not executed. All export licenses issued before October 7 were analyzed on a case-by-case -case basis. Crude oil prices fell about 5 percent on Tuesday following reports that Israel may refrain from targeting Iran's oil or nuclear facilities. On Tuesday, West Texas Intermediate slumped 5 percent to 69.71 U.S. dollars per barrel. Brent also fell by 4.40 percent to 73.34 U.S. dollars per barrel. And earlier, oil prices fell sharply on reports that Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu had assured U.S. President Joe Biden that it did not intend to attack Iranian nuclear sites or oil infrastructure. Analysts believe this remark had eased concerns over oil supply. Artificial intelligence AI offers significant potential to boost productivity and streamline processes. However, global surveys indicate that the risks associated with AI are also on the rise. This reality underscores the urgent need for AI governance measures to ensure its development meets ethical standards and respects human rights. On September 5th, the United States the United Kingdom and the European Union signed the Council of Europe Framework Convention on Artificial Intelligence. This convention establishes a legal framework for all stages of AI system development and use, addressing potential risks while promoting responsible technological innovation. It is the first legally binding international treaty on the use of AI with far-reaching global implications. Make a technology area that is inherently global. You know, AI does not, um, you know, stop at the borders. And so, in that sense, there will need to be some shared framework, both of risks, but also of thinking about um, uh, mitigating those risks. And it's absolutely not the UK saying we know what's right for for each country, but we do want to have you know common international guardrails that mean that we capture the benefits uh, of AI while ensuring that it remains you know safe and trustworthy. Meanwhile, on September 14th. China's Cyberspace Administration introduced a draft regulation aimed at standardizing the labeling of AI-generated content. According to the proposed rules, AI-generated content includes any text, images, audio, or video created using AI technology. Content distribution platforms will also be required to disclose whether their posts contain AI-generated content. Now before we say goodbye, let's take a look at the weather forecast. That's all the news we have for this hour. To rewatch our program, you can download our mobile app VTV Go or check out our YouTube channel VTV for Go. Thank you for watching and see you next time.